Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Well, hello, hello everybody and welcome to a new video. Now, many of you who follow me may or may not know this, but I absolutely love printing. I do a lot of printing and in the last year or so, I have, I've actually made well over a thousand prints. I'll also go on a limb here and say that I believe that the only way to really enjoy the nuances and the details of a photograph is by printing it. Now you're probably thinking, oh, okay, so you love printing so much, why haven't you done a video on printing? Well, the truth of the matter is, I just haven't really had the room, especially in my old place, to make a video on printing. But since moving into a larger space, I now have lots of room to show you how I print, what I print on, and how I view my final images. So before we get into the physical part of printing, here are some key tips and details to keep in mind. Tip one, your prints will never look exactly the same as what is on your monitor. And the reason for this is that your monitor emits light, whereas a print reflects light. As an example, if I walked around the house with this monitor, the light from it would be more or less constant. If I viewed a photo, uh, say, in a dark room or a light room, the image would look pretty much the same throughout. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this, such as in direct sunlight. In direct sun, I probably wouldn't be able to see the photo, but I think you, you get the idea. Overall, the backlit monitor will be consistent from room to room. A print, on the other hand, reflects light. So to view an image in optimum light, you will need to put the photograph under a light source to get the best effect. And of course, depending on that light source, the colors and the overall feel could be very different from room to room. And that's why in our last house and eventually in this one, uh, I will be putting up directional lights so that all of the art that we hang on our walls has sufficient light so we can enjoy that artwork. Okay, tip number two. You will get the best results and more consistent prints if you calibrate your monitor. There are lots of choices of calibration devices. I used to use the Spider, but got really fed up with them because the company would never back up their old products. I went through two Spiders, and with the last one, when I went to update the firmware uh, for a new computer that I'd purchased, I couldn't, and as a result, it would have meant purchasing a third device. So I ended up with the X-Rite i1 that has worked really well for me. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on a calibration device, then I would at the very least recommend that you reduce the brightness of your monitor. This will especially uh, be apparent if you keep coming up with prints that are always darker than what you see on your, um, on your computer screen. My third tip is paper. Now, if you're just starting out and you're not sure what paper to use, many of the manufacturers uh, offer sample packs. So grab one of these sample packs, try out all of the papers and see which ones you like. Now, because of the printer that I'm currently using, and I'll get into that in a minute, I'm only using matte papers. I, I currently use a few different papers from uh, Photospeed, and when I run out of Photospeed paper, I use some of the Epson Fine Art papers, which I quite like. So my recommendation is pick two or three papers that you really like and stick with them. And as a result of that, it will garner more consistent results from print to print. Okay, so what printer am I using? Well, it may surprise you to know that the printer that I'm currently using is about 14 years old now, and that's the Epson Stylus Pro 7880. Yes, I, I know it's old tech, but even though it's old, it still produces beautiful prints. Now, I have no doubt that the newer printers are much more superior, but not once have I had someone say to me, uh, a nice image, too bad your printer is old. Now, of course, at some point, I, you know, I will 
purchase another printer, but right now I just can't afford it. The biggest issue with this printer is that it only takes one type of black at a time. So if I want to print on matte paper or say a glossier paper, then I have to change the ink set or the black ink. And to do this, uh, I have to bleed the whole system, which is just a big pain. Okay, now this is the photograph that I want to print today. I want to print something quite large, so I'm going to go with roughly 24 inches on the long side that is with some kind of border. Now, before I start printing, there are a couple of, of adjustments that I do need to make, uh, just so that we make sure that we get all of the colors and tones into the print. Because the thing, the thing you have to realize is that a lot of the things that you can see on your screen, you might not be able to see on a piece of paper. And depending on what paper you use, some papers uh, don't record uh, details as well as others or tones as well as others, especially the matte papers. So in this photograph, I just want to make sure that in the final print, we can see some of the details in the dark areas here. So what I'm going to do is just go up to the adjustments here, go to curves. And you'll notice that if I press down the option alt key uh, on the uh, keyboard and slide this over, the screen goes white. But as soon as I start bringing the curve in a bit in the input, you notice that there's not a lot of wiggle room there before it turns black. And actually, as soon as I hit the one, two, three mark, four, uh, then we start getting clogged up of uh, black areas. So I'm just going to open those up ever so slightly. And the way to do that is quite easy. Uh, as you can see, if I go over this way, that's input, and then this way, <clears throat> excuse me, is output. So basically what we want to do is just flatten out or open up those shadows ever so slightly. And we can either just drag the, uh, the line up here like this, or we can just type in a number. So in this case, I'm just going to bring it up ever so slightly. I'm just going to put in eight. And you'll notice that it's flattened out the image ever so slightly. Now we don't want to flatten out the whole image, just the blacks. So what we can do is we can put our marker on the line down here. We can just put a point in here. So I think that's one, let's see, 191, 191. You want both numbers to be the same. So we're going right down the middle here. Uh, this marker here, 61 and 62, 62. Okay, let's try that. There we go. Now you might not be able to see that on video, but I can guarantee that I can see it on my screen here. Next thing I want to do is size the photograph for printing. So I have to figure out, well, what size do I want it? So I'll probably put about, I don't know, uh, an inch and a half, 1.5 inches, uh, on the border all the way around. So that's three inches total. So 24, so let's make it 20.5 inches on the long side. So image, image size, uh, 20.5, and then that's 16 on the, uh, on the short side. So more or less 16 by 20. And actual fact, why don't we just make it uh, 16 by 20. There we go. Uh, 300 pixels per inch. Make sure that it's uh, 16 bit, which it should say up in the up in the top here. 16 bit. Okay, now we've sized the photograph. I'm going to put uh, the border on it. So again, I'm going to go to image, canvas size, and I'm just going to add three inches on each of those numbers there, like so. Uh, make sure that it's white, click OK, and then we have our border. Now this is ready for printing. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, okay, how come you didn't sharpen it? Sharpening, as far as I'm concerned, is a very personal thing, and it really depends on where you're going to be hanging your photograph. As an example, I have a couple of prints at home from other photographers. I have a, a Charlie Kramer, 
uh, print of a woodland scene. And I also have uh, a Joe Cornish print, and both of them are quite large, of another woodland scene. Charlie's image is quite a bit uh, sharper or has been sharpened a lot more than Joe's. And the way that the photographs are, Joe's image has a lot of movement in it. Uh, so the sharpness isn't as critical as say uh, with uh, Charlie's. The other thing is, is where I have them hung, Charlie's is, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's actually hanging right above the toilet. So when I'm standing there doing my business, I, I always look at Charlie's print and uh, I can get really close and look at all the wonderful details. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a great spot actually for uh, his print because every time I go into the bathroom, I, I can always look at the trees and, and discover new things about that print. Whereas Joe's photograph is hanging in the dining room at the moment and the viewing distance is quite a bit further, but it doesn't matter. It's not about the details to me anyway. It's more about the movement. And actually a lot of the, the leaves in the photograph are blowing in the wind. So that just adds to the movement. And I absolutely love both photographs, but they're viewed at different distances and the sharpness is different in each one of them. And neither one is wrong or right. It's just that, you know, these are the things that you might want to think about when you're making your photographs. Where are you going to hang it and what the viewing distance is going to be? Now, I'm not sure about this one, but even if I zoom in at 100%, I mean, it is, is tack sharp. Uh, this has been taken with uh, the Fuji GFX 100S. Uh, the, the lenses are super sharp. The, uh, the camera is medium format, so I don't have to worry about sharpness. Something else that you might want to do just before you print an image is to view it on a white background. Now, the problem with looking at things on a black background, the image will always look quite a bit brighter on a black background. If the image is too dark, uh, you'll soon find out if it's on a white background. So the way that you do that is just press the F key in Photoshop and uh, F and F. And as you can see, now we're looking at everything on a white background. And it looks fine to me. Uh, if I chose, say, a black background, you can see that all of a sudden the image looks quite a bit brighter. So just something to keep in mind, use a, uh, a white background. Alrighty, I think we're all ready to start printing. Let's go to File, Print. And the first thing you'll notice is that the paper size is wrong. So we just need to go up to our print settings and figure out what paper size we need. I think I have a preset here, 16 by 20. Uh, yes, that's right. Layout, paper handling, uh, printer options. That's the important one. Color matching, just make sure that that's on color sync. Uh, no, this is for, I think that's for the Epson printers actually. Uh, printer settings. Okay, again, I'm using the uh, cold press bright 16 bit 1440 DPI, high speed. Uh, everything looks good. Advanced settings. Okay. And the roll paper settings. We want the auto cut settings off. So save that. And as you can see, the paper has resized itself. Uh, match print colors. You can see that uh, it does look a little flatter on the screen. Maybe you can't see that, but I can. That's fine. It'll look fine once the print is made. Okay, now when it comes to rendering intent, there are only really two that I would use. And even out of those two, Perceptual is the one that I use 99% of the time. The difference between perceptual and relative colorimetric. Colorimetric is, say you had, I don't know, a, a, a specific color of an item that you wanted to maintain. Say it was for a product and it was a bright orange and it needed to be that orange in the photograph, then you would use relative colorimetric. Now, if there are any uh, colors that are out of gamut, which means that if the printer cannot duplicate 
the photographs that you see or the, the colors that you see on your screen, then it will, it will try to duplicate them as close as possible, but they will move into the gamut of the printer. Whereas perceptual is, it's, it keeps the relationship between all of those colors. So if one moves, they all move and it maintains that relationship. Say there's a, an outer ca gamut color in the blue spectrum and it's slightly out of gamut, then it'll move all of those colors in that blue section so that they still blend very nicely together, if that makes sense. Now, black point compensation, uh, a lot of people use black point compensation and all it does, it just stops your blacks from getting all crunched. Uh, the, the thing about black point compensation though, is that as soon as you use that, if there are blacks that are uh, getting crunched in the final photograph, it doesn't just move the blacks, it moves all of the tones throughout that image. So your image, especially if it's a dark photograph, the overall feel of it might actually change. And that's why I changed the blacks as I did uh, with the, uh, the curves layer, so that the printer is able to print those blacks and maintain those details by just lifting those shadows ever so slightly. If I let, if I push black point compensation, then the, the printer will do a good job, but all of those shades will move over to the right, if that makes sense. It'd be like me doing a curve without those points to maintain the, the, uh, the details in the the highlights and the midtones. I hope that makes sense. It's, it's a little hard to explain uh, in a video and I'm not the greatest at explaining these things, but all you really need to know is that if you use black point compensation, your prints will probably turn out just fine. If you have a very dark print, then you might, might want to fiddle with the blacks a little bit before processing and just leave that off. Now for my purposes, I just leave it off all the time. All right, I think we've done enough talking and it's time to print this photograph. Everything looks like it's ready to go, 100%. Make sure you don't uh, push scale to fit media, otherwise that will change the size of your photograph. We just want it at 100%. All right, I think we're ready to go. Wish me luck. I'd like to just take a moment to express my gratitude to Squarespace for sponsoring my latest video and supporting my channel. One of the features that I really appreciate the most about my Squarespace website is the ease with which I can update galleries and pages both from my desktop computer and through the Squarespace app on my smartphone. This allows me to edit my website quickly and elegantly without needing to have any coding knowledge. If this sounds appealing to you, I encourage you to visit squarespace.com and give it a try for free. If you decide to make a purchase, don't forget to use the code Adam Gibbs for a 10% discount on your first order. All right, we have a print. Let's just lower this a little bit. And uh, we're just gonna cut this across here. And uh, let's hang this up and, uh, and have a look and see how, how good the colors are. All right, we got the, rid of the printer. Uh, luckily we have lots of space in this new house. So uh, there's another room there I can put the printer in for now. Now this panel here, uh, you can buy these pretty much at any office uh, supply store. This one's actually from Uline. The reason why I got a glass uh, panel is it's just a little bit more attractive than the white panels. So this is a magnetic panel and you can also write on it. The only problem with it is, is that you may notice that I have these massive magnets. They're, they're not too bad, but the problem is it's because it's so smooth, any larger prints start to slide down. So you need quite a few magnets to hold it in place, which is not great. But as I said, 
it's a little bit more attractive than uh, just a big white panel. So I'm just going to hang this up. Now, I will also say that the light in here right now is not ideal. Uh, at some point, I will be putting in some spotlights here. Uh, I know that uh, I think on Amazon now you can buy like 10 uh, spotlights for about 150 bucks and you can actually change the uh, the color of them as well. So I'll probably get some of those at some point, but for now I've just have this panel up, which is not great because it's, it's a little bit uneven. The idea though is to just have a look in detail at the photograph, make sure the colors and the shadows are the way that you want them and the sharpness and see if there's any flaws or anything like that. Now you could put this on a table obviously, but I just find this easier. You can stand back from it, have a look at it as if you're viewing it uh, in your house or if you're selling it to someone in their house. Lighting is really important. Uh, the viewing conditions of a, a print are, are really important. Uh, if you're able to try and uh, duplicate the lighting conditions of where you're going to hang it, that really helps in your decision and how you print that the, the image as well. Like I said, prints look so much better if you just have a little bit of light on them. You don't need a lot uh, just to bring them out from the wall. Now, when it comes to trimming prints, uh, especially with the large format printers, you will definitely need a printer unless you happen to uh, print everything extremely large and long. Uh, now, the, the trimmer I have is, is self-sharpening. This is a dull 558. It's very long. And the reason why it's so long is that, you know, the 24 inch comes to about here, but when I want to trim on the longer side, then sometimes it will come to here or further. When it's further, then it becomes a bit of a problem for me. Now, I will say that this isn't an ideal setup that I have here. This is just kind of, I've just put it here for now. Eventually I'd like to uh, put together a proper station where I can trim properly and where this uh, trimmer will actually fit. Uh, the self-sharpening trimmers are excellent. I would highly recommend getting a good trimmer if you are going to do a lot of printing and uh, also have some good light as well so you can see what you're doing. Well, once again, thanks guys for watching this week's video. If you have any tips about printing that you think uh, folk would like to hear about, please be sure to leave a comment uh, down below. Lastly, since we are talking about printing and I have recently reached 70,000 subscribers, perhaps now is a good time to announce that I do have prints on sale for $49.95 US. This does include shipping worldwide. Uh, the photographs are on 11 by 14 inch paper, hand printed and signed by yours truly. And uh, all of that money goes towards keeping this channel going and the repairs on my crappy old Delica van. <laughs> I'll leave a link to my website down below. Thank you for the continued support and until next week, bye-bye.